God, open our hearts so we are ready for the messengers you sent to us. Help us to find your message in a world that needs it more than ever. Open our ears and hearts to the message of the angels. Be not afraid. Open our ears and our hearts to the angels' voices, calling to all who will listen. Do not be afraid. Our scripture reading from the Old Testament this morning comes from the book of Isaiah as we hear the prophet's words for us today. Um, and to frame that a little bit, um, you might know that the heading for this reading is comfort for God's people. And if we think about the time frame of which the prophet shared these words, Assyria was threatened um, by threatening excuse me, Judah and Jerusalem. And these words are Isaiah proclaiming words of comfort, um, great comfort from their God. Um, and the people are to trust in God even in the midst of these fears in captivity. So Isaiah's words also um, link to some New Testament words. And you will hear those um, and maybe hear the echo of John the Baptist as he spoke of preparing the way for the coming of the Lord. Um, and so I invite you to hear God's word this morning from Isaiah 40, verses 3 through 5, and then 9 through 11. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And then down to verse 9. You who brought good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Then our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke. And we hear Luke tell of the events that unfold at the coming of Christ from chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. The Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
the shepherds return, glorifying and praising God for all the things they have heard and seen, which were just as they have been told. This is God's word for us on this holy day. For our Advent reflection this morning, as we continue to talk about these encounter with angels, I want to share with you a reading from Anne Wings from her book Kneeling in Bethlehem called Angel Filled Advent. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Advent came filled with angels and alleluias? Wouldn't it be perfect if we were greeted on these December mornings with a hovering of heavenly hosts, turning their harps and brushing up on their fa-la-las? Wouldn't it be incredible if their music filled our waking hours and the promise of peace on earth and if each Advent night we dreamed of nothing but goodwill, wouldn't we be ecstatic if we could take those angels shopping or trim the tree or have them hold our hands and dance through our houses decorating? And oh, how glorious it would be to sit in church next to an angel and sing our Hark the Heralds. What an advent that would be. What Christmas spirit we could have. An angel-filled advent has so many possibilities. But in lieu of that, perhaps we can give thanks for the good earthly joys we have been given and for the earthly angels that we know who do such a good job of filling our advent with alleluia. There are many appearances of angels in the story of Christ's birth. And it's interesting to note what angels say when they appear. We have already discovered that to the priest, Zechariah, to Mary, and then in the dreams to Joseph, and now the shepherds, the first thing the angels say is, do not be afraid. I think this is very telling. Angels must either be terrifyingly awesome creatures to behold, or it is the unbelievable and extraordinary message that they bring. In each of the angel encounters within the Nativity story, the angels have good news to share, yet they first must assure the hearer that they should not fear. When you think about it, these messengers of God must have been so excited to finally be able to tell the good news to so many people that their exuberance might have been with their appearances, maybe making their appearances overwhelming and fearful. So today we discover the message delivered to the shepherds of Bethlehem under a nighttime sky. Let's visit the shepherds out in the fields on the outskirts of Bethlehem. Several shepherds, the ones on duty in the fields with the flock of sheep, making sure that they are safe. The night shift is the worst, so the newest and youngest shepherds probably got stuck with it. Sitting quietly, maybe around a campfire, the shepherds try to stay alert and listen for the sounds of danger. The sky is so dark, you can't see past the light of the fire. Suddenly, someone appears right in front of them, an angel filled with light. This light completely surrounds them, and it seems to shine straight through them. They scream in terror. Wouldn't you? In the midst of the screaming, the angel says, do not be afraid. They feel their hearts calm a bit while they stare at the angel in wonder. I have the best news to tell you, the angel goes on to say. 
Something in has happened that will change the whole world. The Savior has been born in Bethlehem. The promised rescuer is here. You can find the baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. As the angel finishes speaking, the entire sky lights up. It's filled with angels as far as the eye can see. And they begin singing, glory to God, glory to God, peace to all women and men. The music fills the air and seems to fill the whole world. The words are repeated again and again. Over and over is heard glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to all until the words seep into the shepherd's very being. Their legs lose their strength and they fall to the ground in reverence and awe. Their hearts sing with the angels, glory to God. And eventually the singing fades, the angels disappear, and the sky turns dark again. The shepherds pull themselves up from the ground look around for one another and stare at each other wordlessly. <coughs> then one shepherd says, let's go find him. Let's go find this baby that the angels have told us about. They find the infant savior just as the angel told them. Again, they fall to their knees with their hearts so full it hurts. They kneel before this baby that King, this promised one, there is a joy experience that they have never known before. In gratitude, how glad to be ordinary shepherds who were chosen to see this baby, the Messiah, Son of God. As the shepherds left, they knew that they had been changed forever. Dancing, skipping, and singing, they tell everyone they meet what happened. They share what they saw and heard. Their hearts continue to sing the song of the angels. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Peace on earth to all people. Let's start with those shepherds. Outcasts from respectable society. Their honesty and integrity was so much in question that they were not even allowed to testify in the court of law in those days. These shepherds were probably Jews, but they were a part of a class of people left out. Yet God chooses them to reveal the meaning of Christ's birth. Shepherds who were most likely responsible for watching the flocks reserved for temple sacrifices kept near Bethlehem in the fields just outside of town year-round. Shepherds were responsible for keeping watch, protecting the sheep from thieves and predatory animals like wolves, particularly at night. And as we have seen before, fear was the common reaction to the angelic appearance, and therefore reassurance was needed. Otherwise, the shepherds might have just run away, taking the sheep into the hill country instead. The angel wants the shepherds to receive this message with great joy. So what is to fear? What is to be afraid about? Christian artist Zach Williams has a song entitled, Fear, It Is a Liar. I think the words fit the kind of fear that the shepherds were filled with that night until the angel reassured them. When fear told you you're not good enough, when it told you you're not right, when fear told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight, when it told you you're not worthy, when fear told you you're not loved, that you'll never be enough.
fear. It is a liar, and it will take your breath and stop you in your steps. Fear, it is a liar. It will rob your rest and steal your happiness. Cast your fear in the fire, because fear is a liar. When fear told you you were troubled, you'll forever be alone. When fear told you you should run away, you'll never find a home. When it told you you were dirty and you should be ashamed, when fear told you you could be the one that grace could never change. Fear, it is a liar. The lesson that God has for us here is that no one should be filled with fear. God is with us, whoever we are, the poor, the lonely, the pushed out of society, the weak, the unfortunate, the homeless, the shepherd. Fear is a liar and it takes away our rest, our breath, our dignity, our desire, our safety and comfort, our joy, and our happiness. The shepherds had nothing to fear that night. God was with them. God chose them to reveal the news of God's own son being born. God sent messengers to reassure them and to give them a message of good news, of great news. God also chose them to share the message of peace for all. I think we sometimes miss that in the message God shares with the shepherds of this most significant event in cosmic history. The message is peace. Jesus' birth is to bring peace, shalom, blessedness, fullness. This is the message from the angels to the shepherds and through them to each and every one of us. Christ's coming means peace. Not the end of more peace necessarily, but a different kind of peace. Jewish shalom, God's peace. You can wish nothing better for anyone than shalom, blessedness. Fullness. But there is one catch. This peace the angels speak of is not for everyone. The Greek word used here for all people comes from the word laity. The laity is all the people of God. The word was used to describe the Israelites, God's chosen people. The people Isaiah was providing a message of comfort to. We who are the new chosen people of God are also the laity. The best translation scholars have come up with for this message of peace is peace among women and men who are the recipients of God's good pleasure, God's favor. When we are able to receive what God wants to give, love, grace, mercy, the message of peace is ours. God's gifts are available for all, but we have the choice to receive it or not. When and if we receive what God wants to give us, we have peace. The angel told the shepherds, this peace was to come by a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The babe they found was to be named Jesus, a common name in that time, meaning the Lord is salvation. The angel used three names that would identify the one who would bring peace. First was Savior, in Hebrew meaning rescuer. Second, Christ, a Greek word for anointed one, or chosen one. The third was a word used by Greek-speaking Hebrews that referred to God, translated Lord. 
The shepherds were told that Jesus was to be the rescuer, the anointed and chosen one, God in the flesh, and the bearer of peace. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great news, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward all. The angels predicted this peace, this shalom, would come when we give glory to God in the highest. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Latin for the first words of the angels' proclamation of joy. Glory to God in the highest. The angels recognized the glory and majesty of God by giving praise in the highest heaven where God dwells. Peace to those whom God favors and to all those who are ready to receive God's love, grace, and mercy. The Roman world at that time was experiencing the Pax Romana, Roman peace, marked by external tranquility. But the angels are proclaiming a different deeper, more lasting peace than that. Shalom. A peace of mind and soul made possible by the Savior. Peace with God is received by faith in Christ, the Prince of Peace. The message is received by the shepherds, the least likely to carry the news of Jesus' birth, the coming of a king, and the bringer of God's peace to the rest of the world. The angels that had once filled the sky are gone away into heaven, and the shepherds drop everything, maybe even leave sheep behind that they are tending. We don't know. They turn to one another and do just as the angel had said. Go into the town of Bethlehem and search for the babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. They go, hoping to see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord had made known to them, and only them. They go and go quickly with haste until they find Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, again, just as the angel had said. But the shepherds did so much more than that. More than they were told to do. Now that they have found their Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord, they begin to widely spread the good news of his birth. They told all the people they encountered about this miraculous night. All those who heard the good news of the shepherds marveled at all that they were told. Then the shepherds returned to the flocks in the fields, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. We can imagine them sharing their own gloria in excelsis Deo through the streets of Bethlehem, and then in the fields as they checked on the lambs and the sheep. They were proclaiming the joy of all that they had heard and seen and experienced. Chosen by God to be witnesses to the birth of God's own Son, Savior, Christ the Lord, Rescuer, Anointed and Chosen One, God in the flesh, Prince of Peace. Only Mary, exhausted new mother of God's Son, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She held her joy quietly. She celebrated her gloria in her heart. One wonders how often in the years ahead she would ponder the events of 
that night. When, in the events that would unfold throughout her son's life, would she reflect back on his birth and remember the proclamation of joy the shepherds shared with the world and the promise of peace for all? Mary treasured these things in her heart. Words that are found in Scripture one more time and heard again after Jesus as a 12-year-old boy stays at the temple in Jerusalem following the Passover and his parents return to find him there. Then Jesus went down to Nazareth with Mary and Joseph and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. Luke 2, 51. Mary let go of her fear to receive the good news that she would carry and give birth to God's one and only son. Joseph let go of his fear and took Mary as his wife just as he was told and loved God's Son as if he were his own. Now the shepherds shake off their fear of being the outcasts and become messengers of God's good news and the birth of the Messiah bringing peace for all. God chooses ordinary people like peasant girls, carpenters, and shepherds like you and me, to be part of God's amazing story. We are chosen people of God, sons and daughters, invited to the love, grace, and mercy, and peace that fills the nighttime sky and the manger in a stable in Bethlehem. Mary Ann Williams writes this in her book, a return to love, reflections on the principles of a course in miracles. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, <clears throat> fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking <clears throat> so that our other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in every one. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Do not be afraid. God's promise to you is this. Be fearful. Only to let go of that fear be fearless, for God is with you. May it always be so. Amen.